In this episode, we are going to find out the electric supercar's range. Let's get to it. The plan is to show you the footage of the range drives and along the way I'll give you some comments, things that I'm finding out along the way through the first 500 miles. To test the range I went on several trips recording both the voltage and mileage. From here I can extrapolate the car's range. Now to introduce you to my playground. Here's the United States and zooming in closer you can see Utah. Zooming in even closer you can see the Salt Lake City Valley. I live in a suburb called South Jordan. This is the base of operations for testing. In a 3D view, you can see that I live in a valley with some great canyons for test driving. The first one we'll look at is called Big Cottonwood Canyon. And at the top is Brighton Ski Resort at an elevation of 8,707 feet. This is approximately a 52 mile round trip. Things that I notice while I'm driving my car. So I've never had a open air roadster or convertible before. Some of the things that were very new or some of the things I noticed, number one was everything is amplified, meaning you're, you're, it seems like you're closer to your environment just with kind of the top removed. Um, you feel much closer, much more vulnerable. I apologize. I realize I'm pretty sure that I packed 30 minutes of car sickness into about 60 seconds. Along with that, there are other things like smell. Um, normally when you're in a car, um, you don't kind of notice smells. And when you're in an open air roadster, um, you'll drive up to a stoplight or something and you just think, you kind of do that sniff smell and it's like, is that my car? Is something wrong? And I'm sure as, as I've been driving it, I think it's just kind of road smell. You know, there's just lots of different smells based on people's cars. Now we're at the top of the canyon. Another nice drive. We are now at Brighton Ski Resort. Again, very pretty. We're just walking over here to the lake. All right, this one is Silver Lake. All right, exiting Brighton. So we'll change it up for the remainder of the trip. So for all the other trip videos, we'll just uh, break these out in kind of 10 second increments so you can kind of get a better feel of, of what driving's like. Um, the other thing is sound. So sound, it is very loud. I, I would say anything over about 40 miles an hour is just, um, I'll say it's loud enough that you can't really have a conversation. Um, and anything over that, it's, you know, so freeway driving, it's, I'll just say it's uh, not as nice as when you're going a little bit slower. Just got back from kind of the range test. Carded great, no issues at all. So I parked my car outside yesterday. It was kind of mid 90s and it uh, is allowing me to have some rewrapping opportunities. So, I don't know if you can see over there, but it's like, oh my goodness. So, I think some of the places where I really stretched, um, even though it was tacked down, it was fine, kind of at room temperature, 
um, when it got up to high temperatures it kind of tended to pull away. So I have that in a couple spots um, right here on the on this kind of housing and then you know here as well. So when the time comes we will rewrap. Okay I'm here in the car in the heat, been doing a couple drives and the contact adhesive that I've been using recently seems to just not be holding up under heat. So that strip's fallen off right here. This is kind of coming apart. So I might have to go back to the other brand. Um, if you guys have any other thoughts, oh, by the way, this one up here, again, it's kind of trying to work its way loose, but I uh, had to figure out what to do there. The second trip was to Snowbird Ski Resort, about a 36 mile round trip. And I started about three quarters full charge. The handling is amazing. It is a very, very lightweight car, and um, when you drive, you just kind of notice. Um, it just kind of very easily follows where you, wherever you want to go. And the weight, it, it seems very light, very agile. The power is amazing. So again, going up the canyon, um, anytime you kind of just think, you know, maybe I want to speed up a little bit, boom, you're there. I mean, you are there. Uh, lots of other cars you kind of have to uh, downshift or kind of you know step on the throttle and wait for the engine to engage and kind of slowly build up some momentum this is just you just give it the slightest little flick of that pedal and you are gone I mean just gone okay we are just at the top of the canyon uh, this is Snowbird Ski Resort and uh, beautiful colors here uh, as it's turning to fall so that is the tram that goes to the top of the mountain for skiing. At the top of Snowbird, we ate some lunch and then stopped off for some photo shoots, glamour shots, and some Instagram posts. Then back down the canyon. Just look at the stunning views. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet now so you can enjoy the drive.
For the subsequent trips, I didn't really have a planned destination. So this involved going back and forth to work, going to the doctor's office, picking my daughter up from school, going to the hardware store, and just joyriding. We had our first experience with rain today. Not too bad. Again, I just get worried because not everything's, I think, quite weatherproof. So one other thing I did want to mention is charging. Charging for my car is incredibly slow. This is due to my onboard charger. It is a 2,500 watt charger, which sounds like a lot. But if you think about it, that's 2.5 kilowatts. If I needed to charge my car 25 kilowatt hours, that means it would take 10 hours to charge. So I can upgrade my onboard charger. Maybe I'll do that in the future. To do something like super fast charging or DC fast charging, I would need to change my car's configuration so that I could have active cooling while I'm charging. If you can imagine driving really fast on the racetrack, some may worry that you may overheat your batteries, therefore you have cooling. Well, if you think about it, fast charging is about the same thing, except for instead of drawing that much current out of the batteries, you are putting that much current into the batteries at a very fast rate. So I would need to have active cooling while I'm charging. Maybe I'll do that another day. So all the trips combined, I'm pretty close to 500 miles. Okay, I'm sure maybe this doesn't make sense to you, but I'm just kind of trying to log my miles, where I've been, where I started. So this was 386, and we ended at 346. All right, now it's time for some results. I like to highlight my extremes. So on the hypermiling side, we have Danny Fennell at 482 miles and Ben Barber at 462 miles. I appreciate you guys thinking that I could drive so carefully, but uh, a little shy of that mark. My track stars are Bushy, said 120 kilometers, that is about 74 and a half miles, as well as Robert Savage, 86 miles. So I'm pretty sure if I was driving at the track, that'd be pretty close. But uh, for my drives, I was a little longer. Comparing to some of the other electric cars, the Tesla Model S has a 100 kilowatt hour pack. They get around 400 miles, at least that's what they say. The Tesla Model 3 has about an 82 kilowatt hour pack, and they get about 300 or so miles. Their ratio is about four miles per kilowatt hour. My ratio is actually very close to that. Calculating the miles driven, as well as the uh, voltage and kilowatts used, I came up with 125 miles for the range. So this brings us into a three-way tie. Chatman Matthew, Mike JF, and Silencer KO. So that means we gotta go to the tiebreaker. So as far as comments on the channel, Chatman had two comments. The next one was Mike had 12 comments and Silencer KO had 13. So he is the winner. Silencer KO will be in touch. I know many of you want to know, when is this thing going to get painted? What is the color? Um, it's still got a ways to go before we get there. So uh, there's just a lot of body work, a lot of, you know, things look pretty rough. So it just means a lot of uh, time, mostly things like sanding, filling, and uh, that takes time. And it's not the most uh, entertaining content. So what I'll try and do is I will work a little bit on the body stuff, you know, all the time, but I won't always show it. I show it in chunks and then um, in the meantime I'll be doing some other things to kind of keep things interesting. That'll do us for this week. See you next week.